In this video, I am showing you how I do a service on this flathead Briggs & Stratton motor. Many of the rotary lawnmowers sold in Australia have come with a Briggs & Stratton engine. This is an American built engine. Uh, it comes in one of two versions, a flathead or more correctly an L-head motor and an overhead valve or more correctly an I-head motor. Uh, this video is the first of two that I've made uh, and this one will be about the flathead version and the future one will be about the overhead valve version. These American built engines are very strong, they're very reliable, if looked after. I recommend that the level of service I'm about to show in this video is done once a year uh, with an oil change in the intervening six months and if looked after they last a long time. Whilst the nuts and bolts on an Australian mower is expected to be metric, these are American engines and they use the Imperial system. However, there's usually uh, a close metric equivalent. I tend to use uh, the Imperial measurements in the video because that is the specifications. However, I do list at the end both uh, Imperial and metric equivalents for this engine. And the main points that we're going to look at is changing the spark plug, servicing the air filter, checking the valve clearance. We will also change the oil and we will look at the blade and generally just have a look at nuts and bolts around the engine and mower just to make sure that nothing is going to fall off. I start with the air filter which on this engine is an oil in foam type. The top of the filter is lifted and the element removed. You can see from the amount of dirt on the underside that has been doing its job. To clean it, I wash it in kerosene. The first wash removes a lot of dirt and I replace the kerosene to do a second wash. Once I have cleaned the foam filter, I then clean the filter body, again with kerosene. Here I am re-oiling the foam filter using the aptly named foam filter oil. I tip a dollop of oil onto the uh, air filter and then massage it into the body of the filter. The end result is a piece of foam that is oily to touch but not dripping oil. I then reassemble and reinstall the air filter. Next I remove the spark plug using the 13 16 of an inch spark plug socket to undo the plug. I check the condition of the spark plug and after removal, this one has some carbon fouling. I don't replace the spark plug yet, instead I will now check the valve clearances. The valve cover is partly obscured by the exhaust. I first unscrew and remove the muffler. I then use a quarter inch socket to remove the two screws holding it on.
With the valve cover removed, the valve assemblies for the inlet and exhaust valves can now be seen. The exhaust valve is on the bottom. The valve clearance is measured with the motor at top dead centre on the inlet stroke and I will use a screwdriver to indicate piston position. I'm rotating the blade. It will have just fired and now it's reached the bottom of the stroke and the exhaust valve is opening and empty and the piston is coming back up to the top and at the same time pushing out the exhaust gas which is why the exhaust valve is opened. It's reached the top now and it's starting to go down and the inlet valve is now starting to open is opening all the way and at the same time the piston is going down sucking in the next charge of fuel air mixture. Piston has reached the bottom now the valve starts to close and the piston pushes up and it's compressing the fuel air mixture so this is the inlet stroke when it reaches the top both valves are closed to check the valve clearances, I have selected feeler gauges corresponding to 5, 7 and 9 thousandths of an inch. The inlet clearance range is 5 to 7 thou and the exhaust is 7 to 9 thou. I am looking for a loose fit of the feeler blade at the low end and a tight or no fit of the blade at the high end. The valve clearances are within specification and I now refit the cover using a non-setting gasket cement to reseal the cover. I now fit a new spark plug, in this case an NGK B2LM, gapped at 30 thousandths of an inch. Before installing the plug, I coat the threads in a copper based anti seize. The next job is an oil change. There are two options for draining the oil in this motor. Out of the filler or at the bottom of the motor there is a drain plug. The easy way is out of the filler and this is done by tipping the mower on its side. With the oil drained, I return the mower to its upright position and refill the oil. Here I am using a dispenser pump to add 600ml of straight 30 weight oil to the motor. I live in a hot part of Australia, but if you live in a cooler climate, you might choose a 10W30 oil. There is not a lot of oil for a motor that works very hard in a dusty environment and is all the more reason why you should change the oil regularly.
Finally, I will start the mower and do a short test mow to make sure it is all working well. I have listed the specifications for the engine serviced in this video, but if you intend to service your mower, please check your manual or the Briggs & Stratton website for the correct values for your motor. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did I would like to think that you'll give it a thumbs up and that you might share it amongst your friends. If you enjoy what I do I would welcome your subscription to the channel and don't forget to ding the bell so that you get reminded whenever a new video gets posted. Thank you.